Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So finally, Wizard Web Builder version 18 has been released. It was released on the 8th of November 2022. And as usual, it comes with a lot of features and functionalities. So if you already own an existing copy of Wizard Web Builder, you're able to upgrade for a half price of the amount um, of the version 18 but if you don't own a copy yet it means you have to purchase um, the copy or a copy of version 18. i must say i have upgraded to version 18 however i'm not going to entirely switch to it i upgraded for demonstration purposes only to be able to test out the features and then be able to make tutorials and then finally switch to it once it becomes a stable version whenever a new version of wizu web your dice release I personally like to take some time before I switch entirely to it because the new release isn't so much of a stable version. So the users will encounter some challenges and I report the challenges and then once those challenges are fixed with updates, then with time it becomes a stable release. So I like to wait for it to become a stable release before I switch entirely to it. So I mostly would recommend or suggest to people that don't entirely switch from whichever version you have been at version 17, 16, or whichever one to version 18 entirely. Maybe you might want to still keep the version you have and then use version 18 for maybe demonstration projects so that once it becomes a stable one, then you can switch to it. So in this video, I'm going to launch with Web Builder version 18 for the very first time. And then we take a look at some of the features that we've seen in previous videos that is going to be available in version 18. And maybe in subsequent tutorials or videos, we take a look at how to go about or use these uh, features or functionality. So I have my Wizard Web Builder version 18 open. The very first impression you notice that isn't, the design isn't so much different from what the previous version used to look even though there might be some you know slight improvement additions and the rest it still has the basic microsoft office design where you're able to you know go about it with ease so let's start with the first feature that i saw from the version 18 features that was listed on the website so the very first one says styles everywhere which is basically pretty fun styles within specific object so one of them was the css menu let me just bring the css menu and see if i have the option to select the style or class so when i come to style there should be class somewhere here which will allow me to change the type of style i would want to use so that is it over here so this is class that has pretty fine styles that i can change and then select them and then it automatically affect or apply to my menu over here so not just the menu there are a couple more tools that also uses the style option here and then even as part of that when you come to the page properties and you come to style section at the very bottom you have the class which allows you to specify or select any of the predefined styles now if you want to change or edit any of the predefined styles you can come to styles over here or even go to the styles manager which should be somewhere in the ribbon let's come to tools and then look at or look for style manager which is here then you are able to make the necessary changes or edits to these styles or even add many more styles to your uh, preference and then uh, you are able to apply them to objects or pages within the wizard web version 18. so the next one will be dark color scheme which is basically dark mode so one of the ways you can activate that is coming to page properties under styles you come to your predefined styles so that you can add custom styles or even edit it so when you come to the background section you have the dark um, mode or the dark theme that's the background color so you specify the color you'd want to have for that and then you are able to apply it to your website project and also to toggle between the dark scheme or the dark color you simply will have to come to the ribbon section and then locate the dark mode option so that is under page and then under page you have dark color uh, scheme so once you click on it 
you are able to toggle between that is on and off between the color scheme from here now aside from that also you have the option to change the scroll bar color so when you come to page properties and then you come to scroll bar you're able to tweak how you want the scroll bar of your pages to show so as part of the newly added features will be under heading which is letter space and so when i bring heading over here and then i click and select it and then i come to the properties of it when i keep scrolling over here you notice that there's a section for letter or line spacing so there's line spacing and then there's also letter spacing and based on the value that i specify it is going to apply the spacing that i need for my heading to or object to that is with the heading two. So as part of the features and functionalities, the two which has been added as the section, which allows you to freely move objects around. So this is behaving just like a card, but instead you can freely move objects around. Now, what makes this even more cool is the fact that you can easily work with layout grid using this too. So when you bring your layout grid here and you move this to within it, you can easily you know move things around and if you want to add more objects you simply double click on it and then you click to add more objects to it so this is going to be like a favorite tool of mine the fact that it gives me the flexibility to move things around even if i'm using layout grid is one of the things that i like about this too so there are, there are many more functionalities or features with it that you can use just as you would have done with a card so that is with the section two and then also from there, there is motion effect added to the card too. So let's take a look at that. So we bring the card to over here and we double click on it. You notice that we have motion effects where you're able to, you know, apply some sort of animation to objects within the card and with the web builder version 18. Also from here, you have the option to use pixels as part of your stock options within Visual Web Builder version 18. So let me just bring this here and let me just select this. Let me just take this away, get a different. And if I want to change the image, I have the option to select from a stock photo. Now from the stock photo, I have the option to choose between Pixels, Pixel B and then on Splash. So Pexels was in parts. Now there's Pexels where you can select that and then, you know, select from, you know, a lot of images from here. Now it's not just for images, also for video. So let me just go to the HTML. Um, let me just go to a video player instead. Let me just type video. So HTML5 video player. And when I click, um, double click on it, come to the page properties. I have this option over here to also choose a video from any of these stock sites. Now you need the internet to work with it. So if you are not connected to the internet, unfortunately you won't be able to have the choice or chance of using any of these um, stock options. And then also as part of the card container, there's been new layout added to it. So let me just bring it here, double click on it. And then under general, when we come to mode, uh, one of the layers is there, uh, cover flow and then you also have uh, i think missing has already been around so there's spotlights the stack and uh, a few more so these are some of the layouts that has been added to version um, 18 especially with the card container also there's what we know as the site summary i haven't really figured out where to find the site summary but let me just see if i can find it from here so this is a site summary so the site summary gives you an overview about what your website project is about to so the number of pages you have images videos audios downloads and so on and then you have the asset manager to also be able to manage um files within your website project so this is cool because it gives you an idea of the total size that is of your entire website project and if you have to take away some images or maybe um reduce the sizes of files within it it's easier to go about that so that is with regard to the site summary which i find to be very very cool also from there there's the option to be able to add your own icons to the icon library so if let me just type on icon 
and bring it here and then double click on this and then when you come to the select the icon type we come to the very bottom you have the chance to add your own icons to it so this is going to be easier for you to add your own collection of icons you like to use um, as part of your visual web builder yeah project so another option is going to be with regard to the form tools which allows you to add what is known as the floating option to edit button so when you double click on this as part of the options that you have over here is floating label which allows you to add a label so when you add a label to uh, let me just add a label and see if i'll be able to do this now when you preview this and i click on it the label is going to move up right and then you're able to type whatever you need to type in the edit field so that is with regard to the floating option with edit field in wizard web builder version 18. also with some objects within version 18 you have the chance to select between jquery as well as bootstrap ui so an example is radio button if i double click on it the style type over here is between jquery and ui initially it was just jquery so and not just for this but there are many more tools that allows you to select either jquery or bootstrap ui for your website project so there are a lot of tools an example aside uh, radio is also going to be checkboxes when you select that you have the chance to select from jquery and bootstrap there's also the image comparison so let me see if i'll find it to so the image comparison tool which allows you to select two images one seven as the before one seven as the after yeah so that is it let me see if i'm to be able to add this and preview this so you notice that so you have sort of like a before and then after for the image comparison too so that is also a cool feature which is available in version 18. yeah so these are all interesting and you know nice features as well as functionalities as well as new tools which has been added that makes the entire website you know design process you know very fun or cool to go about aside from that also you have the ability to add so let me just bring an image over here what is known as stroke so let me just select this and then when i double click on it and then i come to watermark i have what is known as stroke color so the stroke color is sort of like an outline which is going to be given to my watermark and then also the hotspot two has auto placement so once you open the image hotspots let me just select my image and then double click on this and then come to the two tip section i have a uh, placement a placement i have auto as part of the option so which this is basically going to automatically decide where to position or place the hotspot two tip as part of the youtube tools or features or functionalities you have the option to mute audio so if you want to have a video to start playing automatically sometimes it becomes a little bit annoying when you start like you open a website there's uh, something playing you can't seem to figure it out and it's just you know loud and the rest so this option allows you to mute audios on you know videos that is if you have you intend to have automatic um, videos playing with um, the youtube player now this option is also available with vimeo that is if you want to use vimeo instead of youtube so you bring that here and then you have the mute audio as well for that so there's also this two known as drop list let me see if i can find it from here okay great so that's sort of like a, a menu or a small menu which you ideally will be using it to select between different options and then different things will happen so that is the drop list and subsequent videos we'll take a look at how to use some of these tools so also toast which has been available in previous versions some of the previous versions now relies on bootstrap for its ui instead of jquery so okay i haven't set any functionalities or options with it so that's why it's not showing um yeah so that is with regard to toast also as part of the carousel image carousel let's just i think the carousel to you have the option to select um, different icons for the icon that is the slide so these ones let me just come to style navigation instead so you have the chance to select from either font or some icon 
or material icons or even user collection icons. So instead of you wanting to use just the default or maybe using images, you can easily select from icons to replace or represent these um, arrows. Also, a new way or a simple way to create pages instead of coming here, clicking on new or maybe using this is simply clicking on this plus icon over here. And then even if you want to re rename the pages, you simply double click on them and then you can change or rename this pages from here. So that's a, a very simple or a fast way to create pages and then have them renamed in version 18 of WYSIWYG Web Builder. Also, there is this feature that makes scroll bars more or less become hidden when they are not active. And once you go to those specific position or you hover your cursor on it, then it becomes um, available or visible. So as you can see, when I come here, so you notice this is visible. Now this takes away distractions from your website design process. So if I bring it here, then you notice this becomes visible. Aside from that, it's not visible. And also the global replace tool has the option to be able to replace also from a class or a style. So property, you have class over here, which is basically like style. You select the old value and then you can change it to a new value based on the class that you have created. There's also a new tool known as the drop down menu, which has also been added. So that is a drop down menu. That is this, which has also been added to the set of tools, especially part of the navigation and version 18. And then for snap scroll, you have the option to scroll. Let me just, so snap scroll used to be in a vertical way. You also have the option to scroll horizontally as well. So that is for the snap scroll too. And overlay menu as well as panel menu also have the blur option. So let me see if I can select this overlay menu. When you come to the style uh, section, you should have under overlay menu a blur option over here that allows you to blur over all items. So let me see, maybe set this to be 10. And when I preview this, and I click on this, it is going to be blurred, or my background is going to be blurred, so as you can see, and there, so that is for the overlay menu. Now, this is also available within the panel menu as well. If you bring the panel menu here, you come to style, under overlay, you have the blur option, you can specify this, and then once you preview that, you have the blurred option or feature as part of it. Also with the CSS menu, let me just bring the CSS menu here. You have an option to select spacing, different type of spacing. Um, so when you come to style and then you come to layout and maintenance, you have spacing here. So here you can specify the type of spacing. This is the amount of spacing, but you also have the type of spacing. So you have fixed variable stretch and then you also have space between and then you specify the amount of um, space you want to have for these specific mode of spaces. You also have support or added functionality for predefined styles within the CSS menu. So when I scroll to the bottom where I have um, style main menu, I have an option to select from a class based on the pre predefined styles that I have uh, specified in WYSIWYG Web Builder. Now for the themable button, there has been two more alignment added to it so let me just bring it here when i double click on this and then i come to icons and i come to position instead of uh, or just the left and right uh, as part of them we have inline left and then inline right also added to them now if i select an icon here and click on ok so the left this is where it shows when i come back here and i change this to right you notice it moves to the right but if I come to inline left, it's going to be in the middle and then to the left inline right, also going to be in the middle and then to the right of my uh, button. So as part of this, among many more features as well as functionalities are available in version 18. So this is just an overview of some of these features and how they even work. So in subsequent videos, we'll be looking at how to use some of these tools. We'll be able to spend much time 
and then um, see the various ways we are able to use or implement some of these tools in version 18 of WYSIWYG Web Builder. So that would be just about it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.